Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome back to Queen Consolidated, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to the hit CW show Arrow. I am Lilith, and joining me, as always, is Kelly. Hey, hey. Wonder Twin Powers activate in the form of Sad Rainbow and a bucket of water from the Lazarus Pit. So, um, spoiler alert, although here on this podcast, we firmly uh, encourage you guys to watch the episode before you listen to the podcast. Colton Haynes has exited the series, and Roy is off in the wind now. So, we bid, we bid that kid farewell and all the best luck. We'll miss you, Colton. We really will, especially your Instagram, behind the scene pictures. So yeah, we're talking about episode 319, Broken Arrow. The story was by Jake Colburn. The teleplay was by Ben Sikowski and Brian Ford Sullivan. Our director was Doug Arnkowski. I feel like I should know that name. Oh, I know why, because he directed Seeing Red. Ah, that makes sense. And he's also directing uh, an upcoming episode of The Flash called uh, Rogue Air. You have the synopsis. Would you care to read it to them? Sure. Lance continues his mission to take down the arrows, so Felicity orders Oliver to keep a low profile. How'd she do that? Hmm. However, when a metahuman named Jake Simmons, who kills people with blasts of energy and plasma, starts terrorizing Starling City, Oliver is forced to ask Ray for help. The unlikely duo is forced to team up to save the city. Of course they are. Because we just had a team mm-hmm. up on the flash, so Arrow was not going to be left behind or outdone. <sighs> we had to have a Raybot. We'll, we'll get there, though, unfortunately. Our guest stars were Brandon Roth, of course, as Ray Palmer. We had Matt Nabel as Rob Al Ghul, Cynthia Adia Robinson as Amanda Waller, Carl Yoon as Masail Yamashiro. I do it every damn time. <laughs> and Tatsu Yamashiro. <laughs> We had Doug Jones as Jake Simmons, a.k.a. Death Bolt, lamest meta-human we've seen to date. And Adrian Holmes as Frank Pike. I, we haven't seen him in a long time. Oh, and also, of course, Carlos Valdez as Cisco Ramon. We love our Cisco. We really do. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd be cool with just tra- just about trading anybody out to get Cisco on Arrow for just, like, I don't know, four episodes. We need some fun in Arrow, so he's, he's fun. Yes, we do. We do, but we're not going to get it, I don't think, for a while. <laughs> I don't know, man. They're going to have to do something to shake up arrows. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Let's see, what can we talk about now? Let's. I guess let's get into... Well, did you notice a theme? Let other people help you. Yeah. Uh, I, I go, thank you for being a friend. Because <laughs> I love yeah, other there girls. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it was the theme of that <laughs> for me. I definitely agree. This was about uh, friendship and learning to let others help you. Le- letting control, letting go in in a controlled uh, environment, I guess. Well, letting go of control in a chaotic environment. Well, it was kind of controlled, as we kind of found out at the end of this episode. People that were had to let go didn't know that at the time. <laughs> exactly. And I guess let's just talk about you know, this is the Blake Neely showcase. Let's talk about the scoring. It was amazing <laughs> this week on Arrow and yes. on The Flash. I don't know where the man finds the inspiration and energy, but here he is. We get For the out. time. <laughs> that man must never sleep, I swear. You know what I bet? What? I bet that he is the keeper of the cosmic treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> he goes backwards <laughs> and forwards. <laughs> Let me jump back a day so I have enough time to finish this one. You know, I, I wouldn't doubt it, honestly. 
<laughs> he does a lot. And he's going to be doing a lot more, as I mentioned on um, Flashpoint. Uh, he's doing Supergirl, and he's doing the superhero team-up spinoff that's in- initially titled The Atom. So they're going to change that. <sighs> yeah. If they don't change it to The Brave and the Bold, I don't even know what we're doing anymore. <laughs> I said we just start an online petition. <laughs> they want to be every show wants to be Batman so bad now. So there you go. Well, I was gonna say it's, it almost sounds like a soap opera. <laughs> oh, well, Arrow has its moments, and the Flash has had a couple of moments in these last couple of episodes. It could be the Bold and the Beautiful. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that on CBS. Yes. There we go. For the Brave, the Bold, and the Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I think we go with the brave, the bold, and the beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it is on the CW. That sounds about right. So, yeah, let's get into the recap, I guess. Uh, we start this episode off with two guards watching Roy turn himself in on the news as we see Roy turning himself in. <laughs> That's painful. It, it was. The power starts flickering, and the, ch- the guys check it out. And there's this metahuman who's shooting plasma energy from his eyes. And I go, Cyclops? Scott Summers, yeah. is that you? <laughs> and the dogs get killed quickly. Fried. Eat fried dog. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Then, meanwhile, back at SCPD, Captain Lance, who knows where he's taking the fall for Oliver, he's like giving Oliver the what for. Laurel's like, you shut the hell up, Oliver. We're, you're going to be released. And Oliver's like, what? I'm trying to make sure you and Roy both don't end up in prison. <sighs> She's like, yay, Laurel. Awesome, Laurel. Being a proficient lawyer, Laurel. Yay. <laughs> it's been a while. Yes, it has been. <laughs> I, I I like competency. So sue me. <laughs> <laughs> or let's not. Say we did. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Palmer Technologies, Ray finds Lucy working in her office, and he's like, um, so, uh, Roy and Oliver are both in jail. Why are you here? She's like, I got real work stuff to do. Still need to pay my bills. <laughs> and I'm worrying, and I don't want to, she basically didn't want the, see, the team to see her worry, because she is right part of the team. And and poor Ray is worried. Uh, it's, it's about those three words he said. I, I, I told you he was going to take it back. Yeah. And I yeah. totally agree with his assessment, even though I, for some reason I don't think he even believed his own words, because I know Felicity did. It still was awkward as heck. Yeah. But good for him, since she tried to scrape his dignity off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that It's it's Adam size. <laughs> oh my god. So when you tweeted you saw John Barrowman's name in the credits, I was just like, ugh. No, you said no. You said John John Barrowman was going to be in this episode or something on Twitter. I just took a deep sigh, but it was such a brief appearance. I was just like, oh, thank God. I just saw it. His name, you know, I saw his name flashed across the credits. So I'm like, going, uh oh. <laughs> he is a series regular, though. Yeah, that's true. But you don't always see him, even though he is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never really pay attention to it. Actually, um, my my download doesn't have any of that stuff because it's for screen capping. The only when I live watch and I try to just avoid it so I don't get depressed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> he shows up to meet Oliver and he's like, yeah, good job setting up Roy to be your patsy. And Oliver's like, I'm nothing like you. And he's like, dude, Ra's al Ghul hasn't killed anybody you love, so maybe you might want to take the demon head ring, bro. Mm-hmm. Oliver's like, no, I'm going to break Roy out and it'll be fine. But of course, we cut back to the foundry and the team's like, oh, look, it's a better human. Does he think he's like going to wrap everybody he loves in bubble wrap to keep him safe or something? I don't, I don't, I don't, it's just not feasible to me. Oliver is always in denial. I don't know what the deal is with that, but it just, that's what it always feels like. Mm. So yeah, Oliver's like, yo, this is better humans. Call Barry. Felicity's like, yeah, no, they're dealing with stuff. So uh, he's like, I can't really do much. And then Felicity's like, well, uh, Ray could help. <laughs> I kind of like the, the the reasoning of why there would be a meta in Starling. Yeah, no arrow. It's too much crime. It's too many metahuman crimes in Central City. And and the Flash is cleaning up. Quickly. <laughs> yeah, so of course they're going to migrate. Yeah, so um, right around that time, I think. I'm just kind of jumping around because it is what it is with this episode. I want to kind of dig in a little more. Um, the police kind of bust into the foundry and do a search. And like, he's like, I gotcha. No turning into a storage room this time, mister. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And so they find everything downstairs in the foundry, but everything... Well, not everything. Well, not everything, but mo- the most incriminating stuff. And it all only has Roy's fingerprint. And Oliver just can't believe it. He's like, you left? They were like, well, gonna lose you i mean roy already turned himself in and you know you're thinking that felicity and diggle are being kind of cold and it's like okay they're being pragmatic but they're being uncharacteristically cold well and they swiped the most incriminating stuff yeah which we later find out she she mentions right um and so they mentioned the second layer too and i'm like dude as many people that have been in and out of that layer in the foundry why didn't you move there at the start of the season Yes. Like, eh, just whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so then we see uh, he actually does go over to Ray to help, to ask Ray for help. And of course, Ray is excited. He's working on a suit conveniently to be able to uh, kind of have an avatar real steel situation mm-hmm. later on in the episode, basically, is all that was about. <laughs> or, or, or like a Tony Stark. <laughs> We don't mention that on this podcast. <laughs> well, hey. No Marvel references. I'm sorry. No capes. No capes. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have a cape. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Thea then goes to visit Roy Iron Heights. Roy's like, um, I didn't want to lie to you, so that's why I haven't called you. I told the guards I didn't want to see you. And then when Roy's like, yeah, I'm going to be all right. And then Thea's like, is that a lie too? And I'm like, why are you guys doing this to me? You just got that together. You're the best thing about Roy, Thea. Yes. Why would they do this? Anyway, um, back while, meanwhile, again, we spent a lot of time with Palmer Technologies. And it's like Oliver's there, Felicity's there, and Diggle's there. And Ray kind of scoped out some security footage. To get the meta human's identity. Turns out the guy's name is Jake Simmons and he's from Central City. And uh, then he kind of heads off to find, well, we're just going to call him Simmons because he actually doesn't get the name until the end of the episode. Right. So uh, Simmons attacks the Adam, but, you know, and then the Adam's like getting all, trying to get his Buffy the Vampire Slayer snark level on. It, it backfired, <laughs> literally backfired on him. Yes. <laughs> so down the Adam goes and he has to retreat and Oliver's like, dude, like, respect the tech, but trust yourself more, basically. Yeah, don't shrink away from it. <laughs> Ooh! Get your cat I hope you guys got plenty of cappuccino because Kelly's on fire or something. <laughs> it is plenty business central. Calf pow time. <laughs> and see I asked that. <laughs> um meanwhile at iron heights roy is attacked by inmates but in the most fabulous way possible he fends them off yes yes i was so upset though that we didn't get a glimpse to papa allen I, that would have been really tweeted cool it at the same time i was like so uh we're gonna see papa allen or not <laughs> and you were like so he's gonna so that papa allen's gonna save roy right <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just gonna be happy for a glimpse because <laughs> we really haven't seen anybody else. You know what I'm saying? We haven't seen him in Arrow. We've seen Iron Heights a few times. Yeah, I was really so, hoping that they were since they had they could have used the footage from the last season. They didn't have to really do anything new. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway, we're just sitting at the uh, at the phones waiting on Barry or something. Yes, that been yes. Amazing. <laughs> Although those boosters, yeah, the phone booster. That's only because I'm a fan. and Rose is happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, um, what happened? So he takes down like what six, eight guys. Yeah, right. And then like we cut to um, uh, Quentin serving the warrant on the law. And Thea's like, look, dude, I don't know what you're going to find. And I'm like, dude, he did just kind of find a secret compartment in your club, sister. So you might want to just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Lance gives Thea a good what for, too. And I'm like, well, hold on now. Are you really that naive? <laughs> Nobody talks to my care bear like that. Nobody. <laughs> yeah. It, Lance is kind of like on an Ahab thing here, his, though. His, Even though he's right. His. his <laughs> on that he's like we want to know why you're on this ahab level mission we got a guy in custody you know we really don't want to see you backslide 
Right. And uh, Paul Blackthorne gave a really good interview about how he sees Quentin in, because the interviewer asked him if he thought it was backside. He says, no, it's just a natural progression of being lied to and all this other stuff, you know, with his daughters, both like just kind of, you know, one's dead and the other one is leading, like has a death wish, what it seems like, wanting to be a bitch mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. It was a really good interview. I'll probably that's talk awesome. about later, but. I like Paul Blackthorne yes. interviews. Yeah, he is really, he likes to dig into, and he will tell you what's going on yeah. with this character. You know, what he thinks. Yeah, and it's better than usually what the writers actually say. Because he's the actor, <laughs> you know, he puts his heart, right. his heart and soul into it. So, and, and experience and knowledge, yeah. Totally love his experience. Anyway, um, so then... Um, hey, God, that elephant's he, he he has a lot of uh he has a lot of experience playing a detective is all that I'm saying. Um, yeah. Uh, so then um, Thea kind of throws him out, but like not before Lance gets the call about Roy. Yes. Yeah, that was like the first fake out. <laughs> yeah. So Felicity kind of suggests to uh Ray about how to deal with Simmons, about overloading him by using the city's power grid. But then Thea, like, kind of shows up and she's like, they beat my boyfriend up. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> and I was like, all right, that's it. I'm breaking Roy out. And Bill's like, nah, son, sit the hell down. <laughs> yes. And of course. <laughs> yeah. He pushed Diggle. I know. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Did you just touch my baby Diggle? Oh, <laughs> Oliver, you are pushing your luck this episode. Well, seeing that Diggle is could like just squash him. Well, you know, we, well, that hasn't been proven in the, in real life, maybe, but in the show, no, because when they were training, Oliver had yeah, like, gotten the upper hand on him. Just because yeah. we're supposed to believe that he is the most efficient <laughs> warrior on the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in real life, David Ramsey could crush him with one, with one <laughs> bicep. He would just put his head like yeah. like a nutcracker right between. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, then Felicity's like, she goes after him and tells him that he needs to let people help him. And he's like, you know, she's like, uh, and then there's something else probably bothering him. I'm like, yeah, a ton more. And he's like, I can't live by Arrow or Oliver Queen, so who the hell am I? And she's like, you're the man I believe in. And I'm just like, moving right along. <laughs> I'm so over the velocity. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. They are just really, really baiting the hell out of those people, and they are in for a very rude awakening at the end of this season. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> want to be on Tumblr when it happens, because it's going to be awful. And Mark's going to uh-huh. regret, he's going to rue the day he signed up for that Tumblr account. <laughs> he's going to rue Uh-oh. the day. <laughs> anyway, um, back in Iron Heights, Lance visits Roy. He's like, you know, I've been trying to protect you. You know, Roy's like, I deserve to be in prison. And he tells him he killed the officer. And you know, he makes a really, really valid point that you can't make up for the past deeds that you've done, you know? Right. So, like, I, I agree with Quinn. Even though he was being harsh, I, I, I kind of agree with him. Yeah. And I agree with what Oliver said when he came to visit him. He's like, you know, you don't, you know, we, we need you. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad, you know, the writers didn't feel that way. Or whatever happened, we're we'll never be sure. Right. So, um, anyway, then we see Felicity kind of going undercover. That was air quotes, in case you couldn't hear it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. this this always turns out well when Felicity goes out and in, into the field. Mm-hmm. At least she didn't end up with a, a a beautiful necklace of dynamite this time. Uh, no bullets. Out of all the uh, outings, I think she's come out on top on this one. <laughs> Just a little fucked <laughs> up by, by a scallywag, you know? <laughs> so she's posing as one of the city workers. She, she gets a fingerprint necklace. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when her signal goes down, Ray's like, uh, uh, Simmons answers the phone and he's like, this is the man in the suit. And I'm like, the yellow suit? Or, wait, no, wrong shot. <laughs> Oh, he hangs up and Felicity tries to escape, but he catches her and saw Oliver and Ray argue over, you know, who should go get her. And so they split the difference and they both do it, basically. Yes. 
Um, because Ray hands over the suit, which Oliver remotely controls. He shows up. Well, and oh. Oliver makes a good point to him. You know, while tech is great, tech can malfunction. And it has. And Ray does. It has to do yes, that and Ray. Ray needs to understand and learn how to defend himself. And and that's a very valid point. Yeah. But at the same time, they keep trying to push Oliver as some mentor, and I don't ever believe it. Because he's so yeah. fundamentally broken. You know, it's just like, ugh. Like, you try, but, like, it just doesn't come off believable. Like, he, yeah. he has, like, in his mind, when I feel like when he's out on the streets, he feels like he has nothing to lose when he's in arrow mode, even though he does. But I feel like that's the only way for him to be able to put himself out that way. And when you have mm-hmm. that mentality, you know, it's what we end up with with this guy that's bossy and opinionated and constantly does the wrong thing, even though he thinks that it's right when everybody else around him is yelling at him that it's not the right. Mm-hmm. So how mm-hmm. how great a mentor can you really be in that mode? Right, right. And that's all. But I do. It, it was good words, but you know, Oliver still. Just yeah. Like, well, he 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 probably isn't the right person. You know what I'm saying? But Ray does need to learn somewhere. Yeah, broken clocks right twice a day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, it's the summation of that point, I guess. Um, yes. Meanwhile, back at Iron Heights, um, Roy's on the lookout, uh, uh, trying not to get attacked again, or maybe he was. <laughs> and I, mm. uh, so just when he thinks the inmate's gonna shove him, a guard shoots him instead, and he's left to bleed out unceremoniously. And I was like, "What the deuce? <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you serious?" <laughs> Like, we're just gonna, okay. Because then we cut to the queen loft. Oliver walks in, and it's Lance and um, Thea, well, Quentin and Thea, and they were like, yeah, Roy died an hour ago. And I'm like, okay, something's wrong. I mean, and yeah. it's honestly, because of what's going on, if you watch The Flash, and you watch Arrow, and you kind of see what's about to happen at the end of the season, or you do spoilers or whatever, that if Roy did die for real, it would they would just fix it. So it wasn't like the emotional gut punch of when Cisco died, even though we knew he was going to reach right. the timeline. That was so visceral. This one was just like, meh. Yeah. It was a whimper. Yeah, not a bang. <sighs> no. At all. And I don't know if that was the point of it. I, I really don't understand but why it was so unceremonious. Um, I think I think the whole idea in a way it was to show the team broken. That's kind of the whole broken arrow. You know what I'm saying? So, did it work for you? I mean, the fact that I know that they're definitely going to reset the timeline at this point. It's the only way some of the things that need to happen for other things are going to happen. You know what I mean? Right. Right. I mean, yeah, you know that now, now here's the question. If they reset the timeline, then what happens is Roy. Exactly, because he's gone. Dude. He's, they said that he could come back for recurring to clean up a few things or whatever. It depends mm-hmm. on how far they even reset the timeline. That that much, I don't know. I know that a reset is more than likely imminent, but I don't know how far it goes. They could go back to when Thea met Roy or whatever. <laughs> and well, it would be watch that. Well, it would be before that because Barry, how old is Barry? Like I said, we don't know how far they're going back. They could just be going back yeah. to the beginning of the season so that uh, Katie Lux can be in the spinoff. Yeah. And so that League of Assassins never come, and then they could just say that Roy couldn't take the training or something like that and never address it. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I don't or know how the- far we're going back. I don't think that Barry's going to go back to his mom at the end of the season, honestly. Or or that Roy ran away with Thea. Ooh, but then we'd have to get rid of Willow. Well, not necessarily. <gasps> no, because Thea left with Malcolm at the end of season two. Right. So exactly. you think they go back to that part and change like the slave attack? Could. Because then, but no, but that would erase uh, Ray's uh, motivation to become a vigilante. Because his girlfriend Maybe. got his girlfriend died in those attacks. See, so just but. Oh, I don't yeah, but maybe something else happens. 
that I mean, there there is a theory that even if you wind back time, if something is meant to be, it's meant to be. Meant to be yeah, it's going to happen. It maybe it happens a different way. But well, yeah, because Her- well, Ebor Thong goes back in time, and the Star Labs wasn't supposed to be invented until twenty twenty. And he basically mm-hmm. made it happen in 2013. Well, before 2013. Who, we don't even really know when Star Labs actually was founded, but it was much way before 2020, obviously, because the show started in 2013 right. and we started the storyline in 2013. So, Well, now, here's an interesting thing, question. When Barry goes back to try to save his mom, does that bring back Tommy and everybody from Moira. The whole. Uh huh. Uh, you know what? I say Moira stays dead. No offense. I love Susanna Thompson, but I absolutely love Papa Queen. Uh, Jamie Sheridan, you know, from Law and Order. Yep. Uh, the criminal intent one <laughs> with Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> so I say, like, it, it would be fun to change, like, keep one parent dead and keep one parent alive. You know what I mean? But not the parents. Bring back they, Tommy. Oh, you know I'm awful. I don't care how they do it. They, like they could just say he never really died, and I would not bat an eyelash. I just want Colin back. Like I don't care how they do that. Yes, but I mean it could just really it could be a really big ripple. And I, I, I think that that's yeah. a big risk. I, like I said, I don't think that he's actually gonna go back and save his mom at the end of season two. I think that's a season four, season three thing. Mm. I think they're most okay. concerned with a race in season three of Arrow. <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, but I, it, it'll be interesting to see what they do with this this Roy thing. Because I mean, like I said, they said that he has the option to come back and recur. Um, and I'll kind of talk about that in a little bit about how I feel about this. Whole okay. Thing. But anyway. Yes. Um, Oliver kind of blames himself for not helping Roy and Felicity and Bigel were like, uh, dear, you might not forgive us, but check this out. Roy's really alive! He pulled an Oliver <laughs> Queen! The student has become the master! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I just can't help myself on that one. <laughs> and then we learned how the whole thing was planned out and how the prison guard that stabbed him was one of Lila's contacts. And so we kind of head out to the edge, edge of town, and Roy's bidding farewell to his friends. He doesn't even call Thea on his untraceable satellite phone. What a douchebag. Well, maybe he does eventually. I hope so. They better show that. Maybe we'll hear that conversation eventually. What? Okay. So, I, like like I said, they the, 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 the story about Colton Haynes' departure is that they only had him for a two-year contract because he had a lot of options on the table. Or whatever. I don't really believe it because I hear things, I see things, I read between the lines in interviews and video panels. But whatever it was, mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, they everybody can bury the hatchet, whatever happened, and he can come back and recur eventually because I would love for him to go off somewhere, become the Red ear- Arrow, and occasionally on Channel 52 we hear stories of, like, the Red Arrow out in, like, Coast City or something like that. That would be cool. Because, I mean, he's dead. And he says he's leaving Starling for a fresh start. And I was like, well, can you just go to Central City? No? No? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's my theory. Like, I, like even if they like he never comes back, I feel like they should definitely have, like, Red Arrow, every, Red Arrow sightings every night. And then like, that the would Team be Arrow really just cool. goes, yeah, that's Roy. <laughs> and it would be really cool if eventually, you know, because... Okay, now that Thea has her training, do you really think she's gonna just? I think her and Lil know. and Nissa should team up. I don't think that Oliver would be at this particular juncture comfortable with her fighting crime with him, especially because of what she's about to go through. In the right. Next episode. Right, but no, I'm saying eventually, if she she left to be with Roy. <gasps> Dude, at the end of the series, that that's what she, if Roy never yeah. comes back, that's what should happen. She should come back really to her cool. and say, come fight crime with me in Bloodhaven. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Um, or every summer, that's what she goes off and does for five months. That would be cool. Her summer mission trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Literally a mission trip. <laughs> um, so then we see Ray um, bringing uh, damn it, Simmons to Star Labs Met- Metahuman Prison. 
And Cisco, him and his Cisco have a moment, and they name, they give him his name, and they share a little bro TP moment. And then Cisco's like, um, this dude wasn't in Central City when the particle accelerator blew up. So, um, how did he get his powers? And I'm like, yeah, how did he get his powers? Let's see. Hmm. How many people has Dr. Wells experimented on now? <laughs> yeah, way before. Like, any of this uh-huh. happens, who knows what the hell he's been up to this whole time. That's, exactly. That, that had me or, tripping out. Or, or the government guy. Oh, <gasps> General Eileen. Yeah, but still, God's coming back, right? And who knows what he's been doing? It's easy to take prisoners. I mean, isn't that the story? Of, yeah, that's the story of Nikita. So I can see that. Yeah, that's a good point. Anyway, meanwhile, <laughs> making soup, making meta human cocktails, and dosing people. You know, like all kinds of weird stuff could happen. And heroes, and all kinds of endless stuff. But yeah, like I, I'm interested to see. Which route they take with that? My money is on mm-hmm. Ebor Thon as using his well suit. <laughs> well meat suit. You know, I so want a shirt. Okay, anybody out there who's listening who designs shirts, I really want a, a shirt. It says the man in the yellow suit, and have it be the 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 man from from Curious George. Standing next to <laughs> Dr. Wells in his yellow suit. I really think that would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. You know what would be hilarious? If just one day for no reason, Dr. Wells just shows up to the lab with a yellow hat. Yes. <laughs> just go. He's just goading Barry to say something, bro. Because <laughs> he's <laughs> on to him, dude. So it's just that would be awesome. But anyway, <laughs> um, back at the loft, Roswell will uh, attack a morning Thea. It leaves her bleeding on the floor next to the fireplace. And I'm like, what? Yeah, how how many queens are you going to stab through the heart? Dude, I was like, okay, because for me, like, don't get mad at me. You guys know that I love Colton, but I'm not a big fan of Roy. I go, that's not really proper motivation for him to join the league. That's what I was thinking as he bled out unceremoniously. But when I saw Thea, mm-hmm. I go, yeah, that's proper motivation. Yeah. I don't think he'll join the league, though. Oh, I do. Get a motivation. You do? Yeah. He's he's joining the league. It's happening. Mm. It's not gonna be permanent, but it's happening. Well, well, I was talking about Roy. Oh no, not Roy. Not, I was talking about no 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 no. no. I'm talking about <laughs> I was like going, wait a minute. I'm talking about, I'm definitely talking about Oliver. That would be okay. interesting though yeah. if he comes back in two seasons and him and Miss are all hooked up and stuff. Yeah, that's another one of my crack <laughs> shirts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I forgot this way. Rissa, Rissa, <laughs> like um, I just go, you know, Roy times miss it because I'm lazy. But <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the flashbacks. Um, the Yamashiro's were in hiding. Um, Oliver decides he's gonna go break into August, but Masao's like, "Bro, I got you covered. I still got my key card." <laughs> so uh, he sees it. He finds that uh, that army guy has been holding Waller captive. Um, she says that General Shri wants to unleash the Alpha Omega on Hong Kong and blame the triad. And then um, he's like, Oliver's like, damn, we can't get off this island. So I guess we're going to have to steal this antidote. So they still they break into the military base and steal some. And then Oliver's like, you two, everybody inoculate yourselves and evacuate. Me, and I'm going to go kick some butt. And then Tatsu's like, no. I don't think so. I'm like, dude, <laughs> what is it with people with kids that just don't give a crap about their well-being? I just don't yeah. understand it. It is literally Team Arrow point one, well, not 1.0, because Slade and uh, Shadow were 1.0. So let's see. Yes, 3.0. No, no, our <laughs> team is 3.0. This one well, is that's true, 2.0. <laughs> So I'm just like, okay, okay, that's cool. So that's where we ended. These weren't so unbearable. It was quick bursts of action and fun. And seeing a, a, a disheveled Cynthia Adia Robinson was kind of nice. <laughs> you, just, you just can't make that lady ugly. It just, it doesn't happen. No. She could be bloody, covered with all kinds of debris. Well, she and she was on spikes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of where we end the episode. Uh, 
Hindi o crackpot yun. And none of it matters. <laughs> so? Yeah, basically. <laughs> that, I think that's why I'm so frustrated with Arrow. Like, I'm just, I, I was literally kind of bored. It was just like, the action was fun. The scoring was great. But at the end of the day, it's like Roy, not Roy, Ray is just a little baby kitten. Like, it, it just makes it seem all the yeah. more crazier that he is trying to be a vigilante. I don't know if that's the point of his character. Considering that he's supposed to have a spinoff, he just doesn't seem proficient as a hero at all. Right. He kind of seems like Dudley do right. Yes! Somebody said it, finally. <laughs> they are in Canada. Uh, <laughs> They're in Chicago. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, God. that That's my... Yeah, it, it just all doesn't matter at this point, and I'm just really frustrated. It's like, how far are you going to push my patience? Well, there's only what four episodes left. Three now. Oh well, yeah, four. Three now. Twenty years. <laughs> yeah, so they can only push it four more episodes. Like probably three. Yeah, but is it gonna go out with a whimper or a bang? Because like I'm just gonna be honest with you, season two's finale was very lackluster for me. I mean, season one was amazing, and season two's premiere yes. was great. But ever since then, I've just. Mm, it's just been something about Arrow. It's like I feel like they're lost in the desert, and they just and because I don't know if it's suit decisions or the writers being focused in different things. It just Arrow has just slowly started to crumble. Do you think that the reset will happen in the final episode of the Flash, which would cause? Yeah. Okay, so if it happens in the final episode of the Flash, we'll see the repercussions of that in the finale of Arrow. I don't know. Right. Flash is the last show to air between Arrow and Flash. Oh, uh, okay. And now okay. we know that the season finale is called My Name is Oliver Queen, which I'm a little annoyed because the beginning of the season was called The Calm. I feel like it should have been The Storm. Yes. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Because, I don't know, like, uh, some of my favorite series have kind of done that. Like, my the most mm-hmm. recent one was probably, I think it was the fifth season of Sons of Anarchy. Where it started off with so, and then at the end, mm-hmm. it was just NS to spell out sons. And it was a very conceptual season. And I feel like when we started off with the calm, I thought they really knew what they, they had a grasp on it. They knew where they were going. And then it fell apart around episode seven, where it tends to fall mm-hmm. apart a lot in the seasons. <laughs> right, right. So that's unfortunate. But I do have faith that they, they kind of know where they want to go for season four. And I just feel like it's just so much hype around these DC movies that, in, in my honest to God opinion, from the scripts that I've seen, from the dailies and trailers and everything that I've seen, I just don't think they're going to be what they want. And the TV division is so successful. Even Constantine is kind of a success in itself, in and of itself, in its own little way. That don't, don't, don't underestimate your audience is the thing that I'm so frustrated. They're just underestimated. Oh, they won't understand. It's two different. Baby, I've been reading comic and, books since I was four years old. I understand multiple timelines, alternate timelines, different universes. <laughs> that's right. And don't don't cut the knees off of your sh- out from under your shows because of your movies. Because you don't have to do that. If they're different universes, they're different universes. And it needs to be. And yeah. I, like I said, I had the most insane idea. If you actually did want to bridge it, it's Nate. David Ramsey, the Green Lantern. Just do it. Just say there's a diff- the the ring found him in a parallel universe. <laughs> Just say it. It would be sheer freaking genius if you actually ever did want to do that. Yeah. You're not giving this and he would be awesome. Do. Just just throwing that out there again. <laughs> anyway, I I don't know what to do with Arrow. I'm frustrated. Like the like when the when the flashbacks are the best thing about the episode for me. The thing that surprised me, you know. Mm-hmm. Is that. Like I, because you're not supposed to be invested in something that happens in the past because you know he makes it home. But I'm actually wondering what the hell is going on in Hong Kong more than present day. Because that that yeah. human was just I don't know. It was a non-villain almost. It was an afterthought. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about the grave. <sighs> Do we have to? 
you, you might be mean, but I'm meaner, sister. So. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm going to say C minus. Oh, that's shock. I gave it a C plus. Well, I guess I'm meaner. That's um, I guess I, I agree with you. It's aggravating because we know that it has to be reset. We know this. The, the, it almost feels like they're making a mess just to make a mess's sake so that it can be reset. And that leaves me feeling frustrated. Um, and I I really wish that I I just wish that they would make it, this stuff count more. I mean I, that sounds weird, but I mean, yeah, Colton leaving that that's important, and and Thea dying that's probably important, but it's really gonna get not yeah the next episode well. it'll be stuff like nothing yeah. else nothing nothing. Okay, so I guess I'll just really kind of get into my Arrow rant. I haven't done this in a while, guys, so just bear with me. The thing about Arrow that frustrates me, now that I know the Roy death was a fake out, is that nobody except for Moira and Papa Queen and Tommy have actually ever died, like, and stayed dead. Malcolm has come back twice, presumably, I guess you could say. Um, Oliver's Mm -hmm. been dead, presumed dead so many times. You know, Sarah's coming back. I mean, just, I mean, it's like, it's like, it's tropey. It's very tropey, but it's also like supernatural where if one of the Winchesters die, they're one of the main characters. We know that the other brother is going to do whatever to bring them back. There's no consequences to any actions. So why should I be invested? Well, the, the officer that Ray, uh, that Roy killed stayed dead well, he was a little and, consequence and he was to further roy's man pain same reason why Moira's right, still really right. dead to further oliver's right. man pain which i'm not here for <laughs> right right just i don't know yeah like, i just feel like nothing matters anymore and it's a shame like i like i still don't like oliver occasionally i root for him because who am i gonna root for the bad guy of the week <laughs> yeah he he has so much more growing to do Season and it's just frustrating yeah it's just frustrating that he he doesn't it doesn't feel like he's made any steps really forward well, every season has been an identity crisis is the main theme no matter how you spin it when you break down every season that's been the main crux of the season and three seasons of that i'm fatigued i'm over it yeah well and yeah and exactly and he said in this episode you know who am i <sighs> Because I can't be the arrow. And, you well, know. Don't be Ra's al Ghul. I don't care at this point. I'll just do <laughs> something and actually be good at it. Learn your lessons. Because, like, that's yeah. another thing about the flashbacks that kind of probably frustrate me the most is that it highlights that Oliver, as much as it seems like he's changed at the end of the day, he really hasn't learned too many lessons. Because Tattoo mm-hmm. tells him, you need to learn to let people help you. What, five, six years later, Felicity's telling him the same damn thing still? Right, right. I mean, what's your head made out of, kid? Concrete? Yeah. Well, in his defense, for a long time, he got used to doing it himself because he felt like if he did it himself... That but did he, he really, from what we're learning? I mean, he wasn't really on the island, but he always had Yao Fei, then he had Shadow, then he had Shadow... In um, Deathstroke, then he had, he gets to Hong Kong, he's got Maceo and Tatsu and Amanda Waller. And, you know, when he gets to Russia, he's got, you know, KG Beast. I mean, was he really mm-hmm. on his own? How is he this bad at, you know, letting people help him when at every turn, that's all people do? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm that's just so true. That, that's the thing about that. I don't know if that's the point of the uh, of the flashbacks is to make just Oliver seem incompetent. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I don't even know why we're doing this. If the virus doesn't come into play in the season finale, I don't know what we're doing. I, I'm just lost. I don't. I don't understand what they're doing anymore. Like, I. I, I want to trust them, but man, they. They kind of broken my trust a couple times this season. So. Hopefully, we get it together. I, I think the finale is gonna be good, but at the end of the day, a moot point, which is just frustrating. <laughs> Again, I, I think it's gonna be tons of action, great scoring, great acting, but. Is it really going to matter? Yeah. Whereas Flash is definitely going to matter. 
Mm-hmm. Well, the demo that matters to uh, certain people, which is, you know, 18 to, and I'm just being generous, 18 to 34, really it's 18 to like 25. They all basically binge. That's how they that's how they watch it now. And I mean, I don't agree with it, but a lot of critics have been saying this could be the show that possibly, you know, the Flash, people watch the Flash for a completely different reason. Arrow started off as this gritty, oh, he kills, and then they tried to back away from it. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. definitely gritty and dark, has great casting, it's cinematically beautiful, and you can binge watch it in one day. <laughs> I right, have to wait right. week to week to week for di- utter disappointment. <laughs> you know, right? I, I definitely think it was an average episode of Arrow, but like I said, when we ramp up towards the finale, like it should never be average. We should be doing right. B pluses or better at this point. I don't think I've given one single episode an A, any kind of A this season. No, I, I did. I gave fourteen an A, but we didn't grade fourteen. Um, whoopsie, best scene for me. The most surprising scene and the scene that stuck with me was was Roy. Well, both scenes with Roy in prison, mm-hmm. I agree. with him taking out the bad guys, and then with him getting stabbed. Those two stuck with me, as well as the end with Thea. Best scene, hands down. Um, they, I will say that they really did go out of their way to give Colton a really good send off, both emotionally and physical action. Um, mm-hmm. I loved. The scene where he got jumped. It was great. And I love yes. his scene with Thea. And I love the red car. He's got a bra on. <laughs> there you go. Um, um, yeah, definitely. So were there any lines that stuck out to you? Mm-hmm. The ones that annoyed me were where Ray's team up things. Those annoyed the crap of me. I hated them, but I'm a grump. Oh. I'm a curmudgeon. What's your excuse, Kelly? Uh, maybe because he just said them the day before. Um... <laughs> I think my favorite line, because it reminded me of something you would say, where Ray's like, um, how did they get fed and, you know, complete the transaction, so to speak? <laughs> like, Kelly, is that you? Did you write that, Kelly? He's channeling me. Maybe I did. Maybe he's channeling his inner Kelly. <laughs> I, I for sure thought that that was going to be your thing. Um, and another one was uh, Felicity. You sacrifice everything to be the arrow, even you and me. But whether or not you break Ray out of Iron Heights, there is no more arrow. Ross took that from you. Oh, oh, and, uh, another Ray one was, how many abandoned warehouses in, are in the city? No, no, I'm genuinely curious because that was his inner liver. Because <laughs> there are a ton. <laughs> it's like, how many abandoned cities can you go through being a Scooby-Doo gang at that point? Anyway, most memorable moment for you? Well, they wanted it to be, and it probably has to be the two death scenes. That's what they, you know, that was what they wanted to lead you to. And they were probably the two most um, emotional scenes for me. That and and finding out that, you know, Roy was alive, which is a pretty big deal. I'll give you that. But I think my most memorable moment was Laurel just being sassy as hell to her dad. <laughs> so it's like we haven't had a good Laura moment in a minute. No, we haven't. I, I like that a lot, even though that was literally the only time we saw her. <laughs> Small doses, maybe that's the key to Laurel. And and she told she told Oliver to shut up too. Like, that was kind of nice. Wanted to do myself. <laughs> um, I think that's about all that I care to discuss this week for this week's episode of Arrow Three Nineteen Broken Arrow. How about you, Kelly? I think I think we've covered most of it. All right, then we can talk about some shameless plugs and self promotion. Um, I want to remind you guys to follow us on Twitter at QC underscore SMG Pod. We are uh, Queen Consolidated at SMG at Gmail dot com. Uh, we are Queen Consolidated Podcast dot Tumblr dot com. And please remember to download the podcast because streaming doesn't count. So when you're they are downloading. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us climb up the charts. It is greatly appreciated. Yes, it is. So, Kelly, that leads right on into your stuff. All right. You can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and anywhere else that really counts at Super Squint. That's S U P E R S Q U I N T. You can also read me over at voiceoftv.com. And you, you can also hear me on Before the Bat with Tyler and Phil. And, of course, on Flashpoint with the lovely Miss Lilith. Yay. Ask me. You can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. You can find me on Tumblr, my personal Tumblr, lilithfairyhellfire.tumblr.com. Um, if you're into Supernatural, Doctor Who, Sherlock, or Hannibal, uh, you can check out superwho.junkie.tumblr.com. And if you're just into comic books and pop culture in general, 
You can check out my other blog, littlepopcultureVulture.blogspot.com. Um, read an article, share it, and comment. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, please don't forget to stop by our network's uh, website, which is www.southgatemediagroup.com. We have tons of daily and weekly blogs, as well as 70 plus podcasts. If you like it, we probably have a podcast for it. We really, multiples in some cases. So, yes. <laughs> be sure to do that. And um, I guess, unless you are stuck on a hellish island, be sure to tune back here next week when we discuss episode 320. Queen Consolidated, signing off.